Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, we're going to talk about the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Um, RAS, R-A-A-S. Um, sometimes it's called the renin-angiotensin system or just R-A-S. These two mean the same thing. Renin-angiotensin-aldosterone renin system or renin-angiotensin system. It's the same thing. Starts out with a chemical that is called angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen is made by the liver. So I'll try and draw a little faux picture of the liver. There's the gallbladder down there. It's made by the liver. The liver makes angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensin 1 by an enzyme called renin. And renin is made by the kidneys. The kidneys make renin in response to low blood pressure. So this whole system really is about increasing blood pressure. It's about helping to control blood pressure. In case you want to get into the hardcore kind of details of it, um, this is a kidney model. You can see this is the large kidney. And over here we have a blow up of one of these little pyramids. And then if you take one of these little yellow dots in here, they're called renal corpuscles. This is the renal corpuscle blown up. So down here at the microscopic level, we have structures of this renal corpuscle, the afferent arterial, um, efferent arterial, distal convoluted tubule, proximal convoluted tubule, um, the glomerular capsule and the glomerulus. Here's the area we're interested in for renin. It's called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Um, this is a connection between the afferent arterial and the distal convoluted tubule. And there are cells specifically in the afferent arteriole that actually make this enzyme renin. So again, it's made by the kidneys, renin is, and it converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And again, just to restate, the kidneys make this enzyme in response to low blood pressure. They're hoping for an increase in blood pressure. Next, the angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2. It's converted into angiotensin II by another enzyme. This enzyme is found up in the lungs and it's called angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE, A-C-E. And again, it's in the lungs. So here's my poor artistic attempt at drawing lungs. Ooh, that side turned out better actually. Made in the lungs. Angiotensin II is the active form of this. Essentially, it's a hormone. Um, and it's kind of interesting because this hormone was made by the largest gland in the body, the liver, which is considered part of the digestive system usually. So another, broadly speaking, this is really interesting because it brings together so many body systems. It brings together digestive, renal, and respiratory so far, but we're not done yet because we have to talk about the effects of angiotensin II. Remember that the kidneys started off this process of conversion of angiotensinogen because the kidneys detected low blood pressure. The kidneys are very sensitive to blood pressure. They need to have adequate blood pressure to do their jobs of cleaning our blood. Um, so they're very sensitive to blood pressure. And when the blood pressure drops, they release this renin in order to cause angiotensin II production. And angiotensin II, let's put its effects over here. Angiotensin II does a few things. The first thing that I'll talk about it doing is stimulating the release of aldosterone. I'm not putting all the words there. Um, it causes the release of aldosterone. Maybe I'll put release of aldosterone specifically from the adrenal cortex.
the adrenal cortex um, is part of the adrenal glands, and the adrenal glands are these little endocrine glands that are above the kidneys on my model. If I bring it back over here, this gland right here, that's the adrenal gland. And there's an adrenal medulla on the inside, adrenal cortex on the outside. This hormone, aldosterone, is a steroid hormone made in the cortex. So the adrenal cortex releases aldosterone. The effects of aldosterone. Aldosterone basically goes to the kidneys and tells the kidneys to retain more sodium. And by the way, if you retain more sodium, you will retain more water. That's gonna to lead to an increase in blood pressure. So we're helping the kidneys increase the blood pressure now. Just with our first step. Two, the uh, angiotensin two goes up to the brain, specifically the hypothalamus. Oops. Sorry if I'm going out of frame there, but hypothalamus in the brain. And it does two things. It causes ADH to be produced and released. ADH is made in the hypothalamus, but it's actually released by the posterior pituitary gland. So we've got endocrine system coming in now. ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone causes the kidneys to retain water. So we don't pee out as much water, we keep more water in the body. That will increase blood volume as well, or at least contribute to an increase in blood volume, because at least we're conserving water. Combine that with conserving sodium, um, which is what the, um, the aldosterone causes us to do. Conserving sodium, keeping more sodium in the body. Um, conserving water, keeping more water in the body. Those two, both together, especially increase blood volume ultimately. But it's not enough to just make sure we keep the water that we have or that we keep the sodium that we have. Another thing that angiotensin II does, um, again, up at the brain, I should have included it here, um, it stimulates the thirst center. Stimulates the thirst center. Again, keep in mind the big picture of what's happening here. This hormone, angiotensin II, is causing the release of aldosterone, which causes to retain sodium. Um, it's causing the release of antidiuretic hormone, which is causing the kidneys to retain not only sodium, but water also. And it's stimulating the thirst center in the brain, which makes you feel thirsty. It gives you a craving to drink. Um, so you crave water, you drink water, and all together, again, we're increasing blood volume. Lastly, angiotensin II causes vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction, especially of arterioles. And it's not real selective. It does this systemically. systemically. This increase in vasoconstriction causes an increase in peripheral resistance. The vessels are smaller now. You're pushing into a smaller hole. You're pushing blood into a smaller hole. That's going to increase the back pressure, the peripheral resistance. So blood pressure increases. So we're increasing blood volume and we're increasing constriction of the blood vessels. We're increasing peripheral resistance and together that increases blood pressure. So those are the effects of angiotensin II that help to increase blood pressure. If you want more details on how blood pressure increases because of volume changes, remember the calculation for cardiac output. Cardiac output is equal to heart rate times stroke volume. And with blood volume changes, that's going to affect stroke volume. There's simply more blood volume that causes an increase in venous return, more ventricular filling, and therefore an increase in stroke volume. That increases cardiac output. Um, and I already talked about peripheral resistance. Before I leave here, let's just talk broadly about what's happening here. And I'll share two reasons that I think this system is really exciting. One is it really brings for students, it brings together the fact that multiple body systems have to work together to keep us alive. Here we've got the liver, which is part of the digestive system. Um, and you could argue, since it's making this hormone, that it's um, part of the endocrine system as well. Renin being produced by the renal system, being produced by the kidneys. So we've got digestive and renal system now. 
uh, that ACE enzyme, the angiotensin converting enzyme, that's in the lung, so we got respiratory system coming in. And then for the effects of this hormone, um, aldosterone, that's endocrine system, antidiuretic hormone, that's endocrine system and nervous system because it's made by the hypothalamus in the brain. Um, nervous system again, stimulating the thirst center, and then the blood vessels as well are coming in, so cardiovascular system is coming in. All of these body systems working together to help maintain homeostasis. So I think it's neat for that reason. The other thing that's interesting to talk about here is angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE. Angiotensin converting enzyme, uh, we have specific chemicals that can interfere with ACE and decrease its function. They're called ACE inhibitors. We use them as drugs. When somebody takes ACE inhibitors, that decreases the amount of angiotensin II that is around and therefore helps to decrease blood pressure by opposing these mechanisms over here that angiotensin II triggers. So ACE inhibitors are an interesting drug that you can talk about when talking about this system. And, it's a, and ACE inhibitors are a way to interfere with this system, usually to help treat patients who have high blood pressure. And I think with that, I've covered the renin-angiotensin system or renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. If I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Just leave them in the comments down below. Thank you once again for watching.